So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how you can change your study habits so you can get through the hardest class in undergraduate mathematics, real analysis. In the United States, real analysis is one of the last standard classes that you have to take in your undergraduate sequence. By this time, a student would have had abstract algebra or linear algebra. However, despite that advanced preparation, many students actually end up having a rather poor performance in real analysis. And this can be really surprising because real analysis is supposed to be a closer examination of concepts that you're already familiar with, things like convergence and continuity and differentiability. Personally, I went from having perfect grades in my abstract algebra course to just scraping by in my real analysis course. But when I went to graduate school, I had to revamp all of my study habits. And when I did that, I ended up getting the highest passing grades I possibly can in my analysis PhD qualifiers. And then I went on to get my PhD in functional analysis, and now I'm a professor at an R1 institution. I want to tell you how I did that. And so this is the real analysis survival guide. If this is the last mathematics help video that you're going to watch, the biggest factors that are going to impact your success are your mindset, your discipline, and your willingness to fail, and then to persevere even in spite of it. Shortcuts simply do not exist for mathematics, but improving your approaches to studying will shorten the time it takes to achieve the goals that you want. So why don't we go ahead and start talking about textbooks. This textbook is going to be your main companion throughout all of real analysis, and you're going to know it forwards and backwards by the time you're done. And there are several really good eight textbooks in real analysis, and the big daddy of analysis textbooks is Baby Rudin. This is Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Walter Rudin. It is called Baby Rudin not because it's cute. Baby Rudin is the first book in the series of analysis textbooks by Walter Rudin. And Walter Rudin also has another textbook called Real and Complex Analysis, but that's really meant to be read after you've read this one. Now, Baby Rudin has been known to cut corners, leave things up to the reader, and it's not necessarily the best book to study on your own. It's a good book to go through if you've already been through analysis and you would like to have another go through it. And it's also a really good book to have if your professor is filling in the details. Now, there's another book that does fill in a lot of the details, and it is this one here. Uh, this one is Mathematical Analysis by Apostle. Now, this is a first edition version of this textbook that I found at a used bookstore. And so, I mean, just look at how nice and aged this is. I wish you could smell this book. This book is a lot more thorough than Rudin's book. It covers a lot of other topics that Rudin might leave out, and it also goes into deeper explanations. Apostle does a much better job of explaining things, but both of them are great textbooks. Now, there's another textbook that is on the much, much cheaper side. This is $16 and it's a Dover publication. And it is the one that I ended up learning from. And this is Introduction to Analysis by Rosenlicht. Rosenlicht is a $16, it's a little floppy book, and it doesn't do things as thoroughly as Rudin or Apostle. But I feel as far as a book for self-study, for somebody who's just starting with this, it's a really good resource to have. Even if your class is requiring Rudin, I say spend the extra $16 and pick up this book and that'll help you through a lot of it. One thing about to say about Rosenlicht is it isn't as thorough. For instance, the integration chapter just covers Riemann integration, whereas the integration theory covered in both Rudin and Apostle is Riemann Stilges integration. And later, Rudin even covers a little bit of Lebesgue theory, but that is actually the weakest chapter in the Rudin book. So I really recommend going and picking this up. Just keep in mind that this isn't going to be the end all and be all of your undergraduate study. If you're finding this information helpful, then I would really appreciate it if you can go ahead and boop that like button. It tells YouTube that you guys are enjoying it, and it'll try to recommend it to other people who might need to know more about how to survive real analysis. And personally, I'd really appreciate it. Now, the most important part of studying is to keep a schedule. You should carve out about three hours a day from studying and preferably do it in the morning. If you do it in the afternoon, that's a time that ends up getting derailed really easily. And just make sure you make some dedicated hours of studying, even if it seems boring and tedious. And make sure that you get eight hours of sleep every day. I found that as a graduate student, when I finally started getting consistent sleep, everything became much, much easier. Now, when you're studying, make sure you sit down and go over the proofs that you looked at in your class. Sit down and write them out line by line and make sure you can follow the logic to get from one step to the next. And sketch this out until you get to the end and you're satisfied that the proof was correct. But this does not mean that you understood the proof. This means that you can verify that the proof is correct. In order to get to the point where you actually understand what happened in the proof, you need to chunk. And chunking is a practice where you take 
collections of statements inside your proof and you organize them into a single idea. And these single ideas become a technique that you'll later use in your homework, for instance. So when you're going back through that proof, instead of going through them line by line, write little notes about the theorem as you go along. If you see an overall theme or an objective to like say 10 lines, go ahead and write that down on the side. And then when you need to go and recall this proof later or recall the strategy, all you need to think about are the handful of chunks that you wrote down. And then with enough experience and enough repetition, you should be able to go ahead and fill in the details of each of those chunks to get from one to the other. And this will give you the idea of the strategy behind each one of these proofs. Another important practice is doodling. I was told by my professors that I should not try to visualize real analysis proofs as much as possible. And I feel like that really set me back more than anything. There was a 2018 study published in Current Directions in Psychological Science. And in that study, they investigated the role of drawing and memory. The things that you draw in real analysis are not going to be perfect representations of what's going on, but they give you a cartoon and an illustration to hang on to as you're going through the proof. In the study, they explored whether drawn to be learned information would help students retain information than just writing down the, say, bare information that was given by the professor. And they showed that in the cases where students engaged in drawing, those students had better retention than the other students who were just writing things down. And so by engaging in drawing as you're going through and writing up your notes and and illustrating what you think is going on. This will help you not only retain the information that you're studying and the proofs that you're following, but it'll also help you figure out how those pictures are wrong, which will lead to having a deeper understanding of real analysis. And now I want to tell you about the most important part of this whole study routine. And that is repetition. It is extremely important that you keep that schedule and you do it every single day. Go take a look at the things that you feel like you already know. And when it comes to the exercises, do them over and over and over again. You want to get to the point where all of this is reflexive so that when you go into your exam, there's nothing that will surprise you. That you can pick up the exam, look at a problem, and you know at least two other problems that it was similar to. And that'll guide you in how to actually solve that problem. And it'll become much, much easier. My PhD exams were four hours long where I was given seven problems to solve and just pen and paper. I walked out of that room within two hours. It's not because I have some innate genius, but I had already seen those problems so many times before that I knew exactly what to do right when I saw them. Now, once you solve a problem, put it down and you're done with it for the day. But the next day, go back and do it again. And also take a look at those theorems that you've already feel like you've mastered. Take a look at each line and decide whether or not that's actually necessary. Try to come up with counterexamples to show that the theorem in the book is wrong. You won't find them, but it's something to try. And if you're having trouble understanding a theorem or a homework problem, go ahead and try to adjust the hypotheses. You can add a hypothesis to make it a little bit easier so you can get an idea of how these things should work and see if you have an example that would violate the conclusion with the loss of that extra hypothesis. This will help you get a more round idea of all the topics inside of real analysis and your understanding would be much deeper because of it. Now, the most important thing to do is to never look up solutions. If you look up a solution to a homework problem, then you are removing the lesson that you're supposed to be learning there. The goal is never the answer to the problem, but the method that is used to get there. And if you just look up a solution, you're going to rob yourself of that experience of finding it. If you have trouble, go to your professor and ask him for a hint. If your professor is really standoffish, then what you can do is you can go ahead and check out something like Math Stack Exchange or something like that. But be sure to only ask for a hint. Now, if you maintain this method of study, you will surprise yourself at how much more you will understand by the end of the class. Now, if you want help with the particulars of real analysis, I'm going to be developing a playlist over the summer going over the essential elements of real analysis. And I'm going to put that playlist right here once I get started. And in the meantime, if you want something a lot more fun, then check out this video here. It was a lot of fun to make.